Hello everyone, this is Kobe in History and today we are going to have a look at the evolution of elephants. We will take closer looks at their extinct relatives such as the mammoths and the mastodons, but also some lesser known ones. And we will also talk about the different elephant species that have survived to this day. Elephants belong to the class of Mammalia, which evolved from a reptile-like ancestor around 180 million years ago in the Jurassic period. And about 80 million years ago, the genetic lineage of elephants split from the one of primates, which we belong to. And our common ancestor is thought to be a tree shrew like creature. The closest living relatives to today's elephants include animals such as manatees, dugongs and hyraxes. Which is quite interesting because at first glance, none of these animals look quite similar to elephants. Manatees and dugongs adapted to live underwater and hyraxes are really small. But when we take a closer look we can see similarities, like the incisors of the hyrax, which in elephants evolved to be tusks. The order under which elephants are classified is called proboscidea, named after their trunk or proboscis. It has been estimated that there have been around 352 species of proboscidians that have existed in history. And the creatures of this order inhabited almost every continent except Australia and Antarctica. It is thought that the proboscidians were able to spread to so many environments because they were capable of specializing to their particular habitats. But this specialization became a disadvantage when their habitats suddenly changed. When this happened they were unable to adapt to these changes fast enough to survive. And their large size played a part in that as well. But in this point of time, over 99% of all the proboscidians that ever lived are extinct. Today there are only three species left, two species of African elephant and the Asian elephant. The ancestor of all proboscidians evolved around 60 million years ago in what is now Morocco. Erytherium is the oldest, smallest and most primitive known specimen of this order and it forms the root of our evolutionary tree that will grow throughout the episode. This creature was estimated to have been around 20 centimeters tall and weighed around 5 to 6 kilograms. They were ground dwelling grazers in the woodlands of Africa. Another ancient relative of the elephant is Phosphaterium. It evolved after Erytherium and it was bigger, about 60 centimeters long and it weighed about 15 kilograms. And they took over the habitat in which Erytherium had lived. Myritherium evolved around 40 million years ago and is part of a branch that is not directly ancestral to modern elephants. They look similar to tapirs and pygmy hippos and they spent a large amount of their time half submerged in the water. They were about the size of a pig and they had small trunks like tapirs have. They also had long front incisors which are evolutionary linked to the tusks of elephants. They lived in the coastal swamps of northern Africa. Now we come to Phyomia, and this is when they start to vaguely resemble the modern day elephants. Although Phyomia's trunk was still very short and they had shovel like tusks on the lower jaw. They are thought to have evolved in the woodlands of North Africa, but later on they spread to other parts of Africa as well as the Arabian Peninsula which wasn't the peninsula back then. Confoterium was similar to Phyomia. They also had the shovel-like lower tusks, which were used to scoop up vegetation. Their trunk and tusks were longer than those of Phyomia, and their ears were bigger as well, as well as being slightly bigger in general. Their shovel-like lower tusks were used for scooping up vegetation. Confiterium originated in northwest Africa and the Arabian Peninsula. Unlike Phyomia, Confiterium spread very far. Remains have been found across Africa, Eurasia and North America. The Anutherium looked similar to modern day elephants, with the main difference being that the tusks curved downwards instead of upwards. This puzzled 19th century paleontologists and they initially reconstructed the tusks upside down before realizing their mistake. It was bigger than modern elephants and it was one of the largest land mammals that ever existed. This creature lived in the woodlands of Africa and Eurasia. Amibelodon evolved around 10 million years ago in North America 
possibly from a Confiterium ancestor. They had the shovel-like tusks, but unlike Confiterium, they didn't spread very far and they stayed in the plains of North America. They were so well adapted to their environment, feeding on underwater vegetation, that they most likely died out when the floodplains where they lived dried up. Ananchus evolved around 7 million years ago and they can be distinguished by their really long forward-facing tusks and their broad feet and short legs were really well adapted to the jungles of Eurasia and Africa where they lived. Paleoloxodon was a close relative to modern-day elephants. They evolved around 5 million years ago and will take more of an in-depth view compared to the others mentioned in this video. But before we do, I should note that the uh, time span and the distribution around the world of the animals shown in this video is mostly based on the whole genus. The illustrations, however, only depict a certain species of that genus. For example, while the first species in the genus of Periloxodon first evolved around 5 million years ago, and the last species went extinct around 12,000 years ago. It is depicted as such on my timescale, but the actual depiction I use to represent it is from a specific species in the genus. In this example it's Paleoloxodon antiquius, also known as a straight-tusked elephant, which is thought to have evolved around 4 million years ago and went extinct around 30,000 years ago. The same is true for the distribution on the globe. All the species of Paleoloxodon combined covered an area from Europe to Asia and Africa, while Paleoloxodon antiquius only inhabited Europe as well as small parts of the Middle East and Asia. While the species of a given genus were similar enough in appearance, they could vary in size, as we can see with another species of Paleoloxodon. Paleoloxodon cypriotus survived at least up to 12,000 years ago on Cyprus and they were subjected to island dwarfism. This happens when a population of animals is isolated on an island where there are a limited amount of resources. So when animals in the population get smaller, they each need less resources to survive and in that way they can support higher numbers of the population without going hungry. This wasn't the only place where this happened. On islands all over the Mediterranean and other parts of the world, there were many elephant descendants from all sorts of prehistoric elephant species. On other islands there could be different species of dwarf elephants descendant from mammoths for example. We have an example of this in today's world as well. The Borneo pygmy elephant is a subspecies of the Asian elephant and underwent island dwarfism on the island of Borneo. It is thought that the early Greeks found dwarf elephant skulls and incorporated them in their mythology as being a skull of a cyclops. Another interesting species of Paleoloxodon is Paleoloxodon nomadicus. The largest specimen of this species to have been found has been estimated to have been around 4.5 meters tall at the shoulder and it weighed around 22 tons. This makes it the largest land mammal to have ever existed and some people think they could have even grown bigger than that. So next we will talk about the more well-known relatives of the modern-day elephant, the mastodonts and the mammoths. The official name of the genus of mastodonts is mammoth, and for mammoths it's mammothus, which is quite confusing so we will stick to mastodonts and mammoths. The best known of both of these species is the North American mastodont and the woolly mammoth, which is probably the animals you think of when you think of mastodonts and mammoths and they are often confused with each other, which is understandable because they're both big prehistoric elephant-like creatures, covered in fur, so it's not surprising that you'd confuse them with each other. But what is surprising is that they are really not that closely related to each other. The ancestors of mastodons originated in Africa and split from the ancestors of mammoths sometime between 40 and 25 million years ago. I went with the earlier of the two for a dramatic effect, but it could have happened anywhere within this time interval. So what are the differences between mastodonts and mammoths? The first difference is where they lived. The woolly mammoths lived in Eurasia and part of North America, while the North American mastodont was only found in North America. The woolly mammoth also had more fur and longer tusks. It was likely a sexually selected trait 
where males with the most impressive tusks were more attractive to females. That were the most obvious differences. But when we take a closer look we can find more. Their teeth are an example. They tell us that mastodons were browsers, meaning they ate from trees and bushes. And mammoths, on the other hand, were grazers, eating lots of grass. Mammoths are often found in groups, which indicates they formed herds, unlike mastodons, which were solitary animals. Now we've come to the elephants that are still alive today. The African forest elephant and the African bush elephant, as well as the Asian elephant. The Asian elephant is actually more closely related to the mammoths than they are to the African elephants. For a long time we thought that the African bush elephant and the African forest elephant were two species in the same genus of Loxodonta, but recent genetic studies show that this might not be the case. The study shows that the African forest elephant might have been more closely related to the extinct Paleoloxodons, but to be safe I have depicted it in this video as being the conventional thought of two species under the same genus. Now we'll talk about the difference between the elephants. The African elephants have a fuller and more round head, with the top of their head being a single dome, whereas the Asian elephants have a twin domed head with an indent in the middle. There's also a difference in the lower lip of the species, being long and tapered in Asian elephants and short and round in African elephants. The ears of African elephants are also much bigger and reach over their necks. The ears are for cooling, so the Asian elephants don't have as much of a need of them, so that's why they have smaller ears. African elephant skin is also more wrinkled, whereas Asian elephants are smooth. The trunk is also a big difference. In African elephants they look more ringed, and the tip of their trunk has two distinct fingers which they can use to pick up and manipulate objects. The Asian elephant's trunk is harder, and only has one finger. In general, Asian elephants eat more grass, and African elephants eat more leaves. We can also spot the difference when we look at their feet. African forest elephants and Asian elephants have five nails on the front feet and four on the back. And the African savannah or bush elephant has four nails on the front and three on the back. As a footnote, I should mention that this family tree was put together by myself. And it might not be 100% accurate and might even change as new discoveries are made. If you have any other suggestions of animals that I should make a video like this on, you can leave them in the comments below. But this video did take a lot of time to research and put together, so if you do have a suggestion, don't expect it to be out anytime soon. But it was very fun to make and research, so I will definitely do more in the future. If you've enjoyed this video or thought it was interesting, you can let me know by pressing the like button below. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future or other history related videos, you can subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.